Hello again viewers and greetings fellow space travelers. This is Thorn of Night and welcome to part one of a new guide that I'm making for a Mon Minecraft mod called Rotarycraft. Uh, this mod is brought to you by Reka. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, the same uh, creator that cr made reactor craft, uh, electric craft, die trees, and a whole bunch of other mods. I'll be leaving a link to the uh, Minecraft forums page for their stuff in the description below. But this series is going to be covering the Rotary Craft mod. Uh, the first thing you should know, it does not add anything to world generation and uh, you don't have to worry about uh, having to start a new world to use this. You can just go ahead and as long as everything is compatible, install this into your uh, mod setup and uh, you're good to go. You can start using it immediately. Uh, but the first thing you're going to want to get when you get started is this book called the Rotary Craft Handbook. And the recipe for that is uh, an iron ingot, two redstone, and some paper like this. And that'll get you one of them. And in this book it tells you the vast majority of everything you're going to want. Uh, to build and know about what you're building in this mod and there are at least a hundred things added by this. It's a very extensive and very uh, wonderful mod. Uh, but the way this is set up is the first page here, page zero, has some tabs on the side so you can jump to the chapters or you can go through one page at a time uh, and jump to specific uh, pages if you uh, want to look up specific information. Uh, it will have the uh, basic terms here. Let's see here. The important notes, uh, power supply, jump down to the next page. We've got cosmetic machines, all kinds of stuff. Uh, and basically what this mod adds is it's on par, I would say, with industrial craft, build craft, uh, all the main tech mods that, that you're going to run across. It has an answer for just about everything. Uh, but what I'm going to be covering in this episode is the stuff that you're going to need to get started uh, and some basic components that are going to be pretty common in your building of things. And uh, I'm also going to be going a little bit over how some of the uh, functionality works. But let's go ahead and first off, look at this uh, first chapter here, the basic terms. It's first going to go over some of the physics of uh, the way this mod interacts. And it, this mod is based on real life things, watts, pascals, uh, newtons, radian, radians per second, joules, uh, torque, all kinds of stuff. That And it's based pretty much on the way things operate in real life. So if you know the math for all this, there you go. You're, you're good. You can do all the calculation. But if you don't, it's all laid out here in the book for the most part. Uh, but it, here is the first page goes over some of the basic terms. Then we've got the information on uh, what torque is and, and how it relates to uh, the things that you're working with. And I'll go over why torque comes into play here in a little bit. But uh, the material properties, there's wood, stone, iron, steel, gold, diamond, and there's also bedrock. Uh, and each has its own strengths and tolerances, that sort of thing. Um, there are load limits for the different shafts and gears and things that you're going to be using. And uh, that this is where I should mention this mod doesn't use electricity per se. It does generate watts, but it generates everything by way of mechanical energy. Um, uh, force of movement on gears and shafts and gear ratios and, and moving parts to do your work. Uh, and generate heat and, and that sort of thing. So uh, it's a good bit different than most of the other tech mods that you're going to be used to working with. Uh, 
but there are, like I said, load limits to some of the different or all the different materials. The one on the bottom here, Bedrock, says infinity. What that means is it is indestructible. You can't break it. It can be used uh, for anything, any amount of uh, energy that you're trying to produce. You are good using Bedrock, but getting Bedrock is very end game. Uh, let's see here. Next tab. Did I skip one? Ah, yes. Uh, there are things called flywheels that this goes over. I will be uh, covering flywheels more specifically in a later episode. Uh, but I just wanted to cover this tab here real quick. Um, the shafts and whatnot. This is where it explains how all of the uh, power works. Uh, you are probably used to hooking up wires and cables to different things such that when you disconnect a machine the power is distributed elsewhere along the cable. With this any power going down a route uh, just continues down that route and is wasted if it's not connected to anything. Uh, so it is an actual moving part that unless you have it on a machine, it's just going to sit there and spin and do nothing. Uh, really quick, one of the things that you're going to uh, need to know about with the tolerances is uh, the different materials will break either just a little bit, somewhat drastically, or extremely catastrophically violently. And um, it's scaled by the material you're using and the devices you're using. This is just a, a regular shaft used for transmitting power down a line. Uh, and I have a device here that will show the output. Uh, this is a wood shaft and in here it says the tolerances of wood are 278 Newton meters at uh, 3577 ra radians per second. So I have preset this to those specifications and I'll turn this on. You can see that it is operating the shaft here and it's got the appropriate output for the speed, the torque and the power. Uh, and I'll get to the power here in just a second, but uh, this is basically the gist of how it works. You have an engine generating uh, mechanical power somehow, powering these devices, and it's it's I guess it's almost steampunky without the steam. Steam's added by a different mod, but uh, let me turn this off and come over here to demonstrate something. I have another setup here. This is just a regular uh, line of shafts going to a uh, bevel that I will cover in a later episode, but it's basically used to just change the direction of the energy uh, and some more shafts. And over here I have the speed radians per second set to one. So that's way below its tolerances, but the torque is set to just one above uh, what its tolerances are. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it on with everything in camera here. There we go. And with that clunk, you see that all the shafts break. And that's because they had too much torque. Uh, speed 1 radian per second, torque 279, and the power 279 watts, which leads most people to think that the torque is what is the power if they were to look at this. But let's go over to the next setup I have after turning this off. This time I have the torque set to 1 and the output speed set to just 1 above its tolerance for radians per second for uh, its rotation. And you would expect that everything, just like over there, is going to uh, break just like the other one did. So let's turn this on with a wonderful explosion. The first one breaks, severing the connection to the rest of the line. So instead of having to replace all the shafts, all you have to do is power down a little bit and replace the one immediately connected. Now this time it says there are uh, 3.758, or 7, yeah, f nah, 3.578, there I can't talk, kilowatts uh, coming from the radians per second. Now the way the power is calculated 
is the torque times the speed gets you the power and that's in a measurement of watts kilowatts megawatts so on uh, so if you need to have a certain amount of wattage for something it is very straightforward to calculate uh, how many uh, newton meters you need to have your machine generating and then and how many radians per second uh, so that is the information on that R really quick I do want to point one thing out. I believe it's in one of these here. Um, I might be wrong on that. I think I am. Oh, no, there it is. The wattage can translate directly to Minecraft jewels or uh, redstone flux. Uh, one Minecraft jewel is 10 redstone flux, so you just move the decimal over one. But 56.28 kilowatts is equivalent to one Minecraft jewel or 10 RF. So uh, that can translate directly into the other mods uh, using the rotary craft. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to be working with what's in rotary craft. So let me turn this off here and show you a much higher tier setup. Same thing, only this is using the bedrock shafts. Same bevel there, and I have this cranked all the way up to maximum. This is a creative mode one that I uh, just plopped in, but you can generate this much power using uh, different machines and combining a bunch of power generation to get up to this. But if I turn this on, First, you'll see these numbers fly off the chart. You can't even see what it says over here, kilowatts or megawatts, whatever it is. But that's a big old number there. We have 100,000 mega newton meters. Uh, we have 99 mega radians per second. It is a big number, and these just keep on cranking because they're made of bedrock. They ha are uh, infinitely durable. They do not break. So that's a quick lesson on... Uh, the, the the way the torque and the radians per second work and let me go ahead and turn this back off uh, and I'll be going over the details of the machines in this mod uh, uh, their tolerances and everything as I go through uh, but the next thing I want to cover is on this page here lubricant and as well the canola seeds there are some machines that are going to require uh, you to get uh, the substance called lubricant and it can either be put into a bucket or it can be piped into a reservoir or a tank or anything that can hold a fluid a drum whatever uh, and it is used to well lubricate some of the machines not all of them but some of them do require the lubricant uh, and the canola seeds these guys here can be found just by breaking tall grass in your world and they behave very similarly to uh, just regular wheat seeds. Let me go ahead and break one of these. This is how they look when you plant them until dirt uh, at their full maturity and when you break them you get a whole bunch of seeds back and you can just replant one. Let me go ahead and break all these just so you can get an idea. There were eight plants here I replanted eight seeds and I have now 47 additional seeds. So it's definitely a high yield plant and you're going to be needing a high yield plant to uh, generate the amount of lubricants you'll need later on. But that is an important thing to note. You can find something in the world, but it's not technically world gen. All right, moving on to the next thing I wanted to cover. Uh, we have this thing called the angular transducer and it is crafted using just regular wood planks a stick and an ender pearl and this thing is going to be uh, almost indispensable to you especially early on uh, with designing your mechanisms and let me go ahead and grab this guy here uh, when you have it in your hand and you right click on any of these rotary craft machines it will tell you where its output is the red or its input and output if it has uh, both the green is input red is output or let me come back over here if it has multiple directions it will show you what the colors are of those directions as well as having the input and the output 
Uh, so this is going to help you basically debug your machines. Now, uh, if I wanted to know, uh, way before I get that machine over there with the display on it, uh, how much energy th these guys are putting out, if I right click on it, down here also in the chat you will see it says what it is and what it's outputting. And then this will say what it is, what it's outputting or throughputting, whatever, and where it's getting its input says it's getting the input from the electric in uh, engine over at these coordinates. So let me go ahead and turn this on. You can see that these both are zero watts and zero radians per second. Turn it on, get a nice buzz. That's another thing you're going to be encountering with this mod is all kinds of different noises. Let me make it daytime real quick. If I right click on it, now it says 1.024 kilowatts at 256 radians per second. And same thing here. And since this is an electric engine, it'll take some time to slow down its movement. So you'll hear that buzz for a little bit. But that is what the whoops, uh, angular transducer is used to do. Moving on to the next thing, we have a screwdriver. This is basically the wrench of the mod, and it works very similarly to the wrench and can uh, interact with some of the other mods in the same way that the wrench or the, what, what's it called, the crescent hammer or the omni wrench, those sorts of things. Same sort of interaction, same sort of utility for most things, but this specifically also works with the rotary craft. And it's just an iron ingot, a stick, and some wood planks here. Go ahead and grab this guy. And one of the functions of it, there are several functions, and I'll be going over it uh, later, oh, going over them later in the series uh, as I interact with the different machines. But this is the same setup I have over here, except the engine is turned the wrong way. This is turned so that the shaft is pointing at this unit here, and this time the shaft is pointing at the uh, lever. So if I turn this on, nada shaft doesn't move. So let's go ahead and rotate this around to here and now you can see that the unit is actually moving and working. Uh, so that is one of the many functions but primarily especially at first the main function that you're going to be using the screwdriver for. All right moving on let me open up the book here. Uh, some machines can be enchanted, and it shows a list of, th of the machines down here, uh, but I'll go over uh, what they can be enchanted with and how they work as I cover those machines. But it's good to know that the uh, enchantments can work on some of them. Uh, like, you can get silk touch and efficiency and things like that on mining machines and, and just a, a bunch of different oddball things. But next up we have... Uh, what I covered here earlier in a, a brief amount of time, the uh, watts to Minecraft rules and RF. Uh, it also has a calculation here for fuel bucket energy. But also, the there is a device called an extractor, which uh, will work with pretty much any ore that you can throw at it from other mods. And... Uh, this the mod, the uh, Rotary Craft, does have interaction capabilities with, I would say, most of the mods out there. Uh, so it's very versatile, and there's lots of stuff to do. So definitely look into it, especially early on. You can get lots of uh, ore duplication and things like that going. It, it'll be very helpful early on. Uh, one other thing to cover on this page here is... If you have computer craft and are keen to use it, uh, pretty much everything, I think everything, but uh, at least most of the stuff in this mod uh, includes a set of APIs and whatnot for interacting with computer craft and turtles and all that. So you can control your machines from a computer craft or open computers terminal and everything uh, that you would expect you can interact with with those items is there. I haven't tested all of them, but everything seems to be working with the ones I have tested. Uh, next up is the uh, chapter called Power Supply. I'm going to be going into the power supplies um, in a future episode. And let me 
jump back to the front here. Uh, then we've got, uh, let's see here, this one? Nope. There we go, power transfer. Uh, and this is what it sounds like, how to get the power from your uh, production units to the rest of your mechanisms. Uh, then we've got the production machines. This is how you uh, get extra resources and how you manufacture things. Uh, and, and most of your uh, other processing is going to be done with these machines. Uh, then we have some additional processing machines. These are uh, some of the other materials that uh, aren't covered by, the, let's see here, the, st the stuff that generates the materials. Uh, so this is taking, in the processing is taking the raw materials that are gotten from the uh, previous chapter and actually breaking it down into its components. Then we have, if I click on the right one, uh, farming machines, there's a lot of, of farming, mob farming, plant farming, whatever, uh, available in this, as well as uh, farming acceleration and everything, so there's there's a lot to do with that. Uh, we've got some accessory machines, which are basically there for uh, helping other uh, mechanisms do their job more efficiently, or just as standalone items. Uh, next up, we've got defense and offense which that should be an s i guess anyway um they uh, do what they sound like they would do they keep mobs away they keep uh enemy players away if you're on pvp uh some things are whitelisted there's turrets and there's booby traps and even a self-destruct all kinds of nifty things there then we've got surveying machines which there isn't a lot in here right now uh it may expand i don't know but this is so you can look at your surroundings without having to move around too much or to get a bigger picture of your surroundings uh then let's see here there is uh a a small selection of cosmetic machines and these include things like fireworks displays music blocks a projector i haven't messed with this yet i will when i cover it um, so for iodide cannon, this is used to actually turn on and off the rain, which is kind of cool. Uh, display screen used for other components and uh, particle display, which is just basically you give it some sorts of particles to, uh, th the options for the particles and it will spew them like a, a little fountain or whatever. But other than that, they don't do anything. So it's just cosmetic. Then we've got utility machines. These are stuff that doesn't really fall into the other groups, as it says here. And they they serve a function. It's just they don't easily divvy up into, like, farming and production and power generation, things like that. Uh, then we've got a few tools to go over. And finally, whoops, hit the plus sign this time. Uh, some resource items, things that you will be uh, crafting and generating uh, inside the mod. And I'll cover uh, all of this stuff as I go through this series. But for right now, the first thing I need to do uh, to move on is you're going to want to get started immediately with getting some steel. And this mod adds steel uh, by way of this thing called a blast furnace. In the blast furnace, you're going to need to give it a bunch of heat and uh, it doesn't lose heat uh, it, it's it doesn't actually have a, a fuel for generating the heat it has external heat that it needs in order to do its work so if you toss lava underneath it it'll stay stable at two or at 625 degrees celsius and this is in a plains biome i have not tested it in a desert or the nether it might be hotter for all i know but um the lava is sufficient for getting what you need but first here's the recipe for the blast furnace uh you're just going to need some stone bricks and a redstone in the middle i don't know why there are two identical recipes here but oh well uh and the first thing you're going to want to use this blast furnace for 
is to make the HSLA steel. It does take coal to make, but that is not used as fuel. It's, con it's consumed as a component. Uh, you're going to want some sand, some gunpowder, and then some uh, iron ingots. And it will take a little bit of time. And after it processes, you will get the output of, here we go, some HSLA steel. And that is enough to process 10 of them, so that's kind of cool. Uh, and you can just put in a stack into each one of these slots and it'll uh, continue putting the output over there until the output fills up. And this can get heated up to higher temperatures using some of the blocks in this mod or maybe some other mods if you have the options to do so. But one thing I do want to mention about the HSLA steel uh, other than it being used in pretty much everything else from now on, is you can turn it into steel blocks, but if you have multiple mods installed, be careful. For instance, I'm demonstrating this in the Monster mod pack on Feed the Beast, and if I take these steel ingots and turn them into a block, I will get a rail craft, rail craft block of steel, and then if I deconstruct the block of steel I will get railcraft ingots and the railcraft ingots do not work the same as the HSLA steel ingots unfortunately at least in this mod pack and to demonstrate that let me bring up a crafting table somewhere is a crafting table there we go go ahead and put that down and I will grab some of these here we have the recipe for something called a base panel, which is, as you can see, rotary craft. And that is using the HSLA steel ingots. Now let's use these steel ingots. No base panel, nothing. So do be careful if you're trying to condense for storage. Uh, you might lose your stuff. You'll have to use like a unifier or some other device to change it back to the rotary craft HSLA steel. All right, next up, uh, you're going to want as your next item uh, that you are going to craft this thing called a work table. And yes, the work table can craft a work table if you give it components for work tableception. But in order to craft it, you're going to need a crafting table, some bricks, redstone, two stone slabs, and it must be HSLA steel that will get you one of these. And this is how you make all of the rest in the machines. Not the components, but the machines themselves have to be crafted in a work table. Next, I'm going to go ahead and cover the just the basic components that you're going to run across very often in the construction of your mechanisms, as well as some of the other devices that you're going to need or possibly want to use down there at the end. Uh, the first one I demonstrated earlier is called the base panel. And... Oops, it does use three steel ingots of the HSLA variety, and you will get three base panels. And this is a very common item. Uh, don't be surprised if you are making tons of these. Next up, we have the shaft unit, and there are three types. The first one uses three ingots at an angle like that, and you'll get three shaft units. The next tier up of shaft unit is the diamond this uses three diamonds and you'll get three out of that and finally the bedrock shaft unit uses a regular shaft unit surrounded by bedrock dust and i'll go over in a later episode how to get this bedrock dust but just know that this is basically the god tier of the weapon or of the the items and and weapons and materials that you can make with this mod and yes you can make weapons the next thing i need to cover is something called gears the first one is the wood gear, and the recipe for that is here. Just take five planks of any variety in that configuration, and you'll get one of those. And it is used in the manufacturing of a few devices, as well as these additional gear units. Uh, and they are scaled. The 2x or 2 times gear unit uh, is crafted using two of those wood gears and some sticks. Then the 4X is two of the 2X gears and some sticks. And as you would expect, 4 times 2, 4X and 2X like that with some sticks. And then finally the 16 is the 8 times 2 
to get you those. And these basically, as they scale up, they can handle more load and more power and throughput and, and more production. And in order to make just one of these 16x wood gear units, you're going to need a total of 40 standalone wood planks and 14 sticks. That's just to make that. Next up we have stone gears. Same sort of idea here, only it's smooth stone for this and everything else is the same except you will notice that, oops, let's not exit out of here this time. Uh, instead of sticks it has these things called stone rods. The stone rod recipe is just like the shaft only it's made of stone uh, and that is smooth stone there and you'll get two of them out of that recipe. Uh, so in order to make one 16x gear in the same configuration, 8 times 2, which is a 4 times 2, which is 2 times 2, and so on and so forth, uh, you'll need 41 smooth stone to make one of these gears. Next up we have what's called just the HSLA steel gears. It doesn't say uh, steel for the rest of the uh, gear units, but... It is called a steel gear for the first one, and its recipe is, as you might imagine, five steel ingots. And that will get you three of those, by the way. Uh, and same sort of idea here, shaft unit for the 2x, and th the same order and configuration all the way up to the 16x. And in order to get one 16x, you're going to need 30 steel. All right, next up are the diamonds, and this is, as you would expect, f five diamonds in that configuration, and it will get you eight diamond gears, so get a little bit more return out of this one, uh, which is a little bit nicer. But the diamond gear, same sort of idea here. It uses the diamond shaft unit and some diamond gears, same s uh, or, uh, organization of the different components to get the 16x gear all the way up and in order to get that you are going to need 20 diamonds just for one of these so a little bit more expensive and then we have the top tier bedrock gears it is for making eight of the plain bedrock gears you'll need five of the hsla steel and four bedrock dust and then everything else is the same configuration the bedrock shaft units the scaled gears there and then finally the 16x gear <laughs> excuse me sorry about that i broke into a coughing fit anyway the 16x gear uh requires 20 bedrock dust 11 hsla steel ingots and that is the end all be all of uh making your gears once you get to that you're not going to have uh any real problems other than the tolerances of the machines that you're working with but as far as transmission goes those are going to be your primary objective especially late in the game all right another component that you're going to run across very often is called a mount and there are different styles of mounts and you can see that this mount looks very similar to the wood shaft here and that's because it serves a similar purpose but the recipe for it is four of these steel ingots and one base panel. All right, next up, some of the common components. Uh, the impeller, this is very common, uh, requires four of these steel ingots and one steel gear. You'll get one of those impellers there. And I'll go over the recipes that are used uh, in, uh, uh, or that use these items in their manufacturing but uh, for right now you just need to know how to make them. Uh, the shaft core is next and that's just one steel and getting two shaft units. Then the compressor is a steel gear and eight ingots. Whoops. The diffuser, somewhat common, just five ingots there. And then finally the cylinder which is eight ingots with a hole in the middle. Oh, and that'll get you two for that. Next up, some additional components. Uh, the turbine, it uses eight of these things called propeller blades, and I'll show you what those are in a moment, and a compressor in the middle. This is a propeller blade. It needs a base panel, a steel ingot, and a shaft unit, and this is used in a couple of things. 
Uh, next, we have a combustor, which is some steel and gets a redstone and an ignition unit. And that needs five steel and gets redstone, some gold. And then finally, the last two things, the once you get the steel, you're probably going to want to upgrade your armor to a better tier. So all of the HSLA uh, armor is available, all four pieces, and they have a higher durability and higher protection than iron. Uh, so the investment is definitely worth it. it. It does protect you a lot better and they can be enchanted. Uh, then finally, all the tools that you would expect you can make uh, can be made. Um, the tools can and weapons can be enchanted as well. And they last 600 uses and work at the, uh, for instance, the mining level of iron. So don't expect this to be able to uh, break some of the other mods ores that need higher than iron to break uh, it'll take forever to break obsidian and you won't get it but they will last 600 uses but that i believe is everything i wanted to cover in this the first episode the getting started uh, i'm going to be covering everything else in the mod uh, of which i am aware uh, in as much detail as is sane and reasonable uh, so do come back. I'm going to uh, do this in stages so it isn't uh, too much information all at once. Uh, probably separate it into pages of the book, uh, like the power production and whatnot. But uh, if I do miss anything, I will do my best to have a, a brush-up episode at the end or something, but please do let me know. I'm going to try to cover everything, If uh, but I, I am human. I may miss something. So please feel free to uh, tell me if I have uh, misspoken or if there is anything absent from my explanations here. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap up, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please feel free to leave a message in the comment section below. I will do my best to get back to you either in the comments or in a video. Um, if you like this video and you like what I'm doing here, please feel free to give a like. I do appreciate that. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe so you know when my future stuff comes out, including the rest of this uh, guide for this mod here and, and any other mod guides that I'm working on. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and wrap up, so thank you once again for watching. This is Thorn of Night, and I will talk to you later.